I'm gonna cover two best practice tips and then I'm gonna get a little bit technical to make sure that if you're sending an email, it goes to the right place. So first up, let's talk list hygiene. And what this means is basically looking after the list of the people that you're sending emails to. Now, whether that's a bunch of customers or suppliers that you're sending broadcast emails to on a short, infrequent basis, or if you've got an email marketing list with thousands or even tens of thousands of people that you're sending regular updates to. You need to make sure that that list stays clean. Now there are tools built into most email sending software that can help you to clean up contacts that haven't opened or engaged with any of your emails recently. There are also third party tools which can help you to upload your list and check if there's any dead email addresses or perhaps expired email accounts that are no longer gonna receive your emails. If you've got customers on your list that you know are a good email, but they're not engaging with your content, well, it might be time to send them a re-engagement campaign. This kind of campaign is specifically designed to elicit a response from the customers and allow them to either re-engage with your business and your content or unsubscribe and you won't send them any emails anymore. Second tip is to be very careful about the emails that you send. You wanna avoid spam triggery phrases and potential sales pitches that are too hard in your content. The reason for that is if you're aiming to build a genuine connection with your customers and you're making each email feel like almost like a one-to-one -one conversation, well, they're less likely to feel like it's spam and they're less likely to hit that spam button instead of the unsubscribe button. Now, it's totally fine if someone reads one of your emails and decides they don't wanna be on your email list anymore and hits that unsubscribe button to remove themselves. But when someone hits the spam button and marks your email as spam, not only does it hurt your sender reputation, but it can actually hurt your ability to send emails to other customers and other people in your audience. Marketing techniques that might be considered spammy include downloading lists or buying lists online and sending bulk emails. And sometimes that's not actually legal based on the jurisdiction you're in and the spam laws. You need to be very careful sending an unsolicited email to someone that you've not already been in touch with. Now, my next tip is an important one, but we're gonna get a little bit technical. You see, there's three technical things you need to get right inside your domain name or DNS settings to make sure that emails actually go into people's inboxes correctly. And they are SPF, DKIM, and DMARC settings. Now, if these have gone completely over your head, that's fine. This is the kind of thing that you can first run a test and if that test fails, well, you can send it to a technical person to have them help resolve the issue. If you'd like some help from us, click the link down below this video. Now, testing your domain name at mxtoolbox.com will tell you if you've got each of these three protocols configured correctly. You need to make sure that your SPF is configured for every service that you use to authorize that service to send email on your behalf. Think your mailing list, your web server, and also if you're using Google or Office 365, needing to be listed in the list of allowed senders. DKIM helps to reduce spam and people pretending to be you on the internet. If you have this configured, well, it'll stop other third parties from potentially using your email address. This is important to be switched on because Google have said that they're less likely to deliver emails if DKIM is not configured for your domain name and you're sending marketing broadcast emails to an audience. Finally, DMARC is a set of protocols that basically say what happens if an email fails the SPF or fails the DKIM check. Think of it like a bouncer at a party deciding who gets to get in and who is left out on the street. You wanna make sure that this is configured so email providers around the world know how to handle if someone is pretending to be you on the internet. If you're an email marketer, do those three things and you're more likely to have your emails end up in someone's inbox rather than the trash and you're not gonna hurt your ability to send in the future. If you need any help with this or another technical issue related to DNS, click the link down below and our professional support team are on the line ready to help you immediately.